as you can see, I'm taking pictures of our dolphins. This is how we photo identify them. And then it's a non-invasive way of figuring out what individuals here. Because they can, they're a migratory species, and so they can, in the winter, they'll go south or to warmer areas. We like to know when they come back, who's coming back. Fission fusion societies. So they kind of like to hang around with different individuals at different times. They don't really stay in a pod per se for life. They'll just hang out with random relatives or friends that they find nearby. There are two types of bond or pairings that last several years. And that's the mom calf pair, where mom and calf stay together for three to six years. And then the male bond pair, which is two guys who team up in their juvenile stage hang out for several years or their entire lives. Dolphins can grow up to 900 pounds, I mean, sorry, 600 pounds and 9 feet long. In order to maintain that body weight, they need to eat around 30 pounds of fish a day. So they like to eat louder fish such as red drum and croaker that are in this area that emit a noise. They're easier to hunt than catch.
that crab pot. like in a team? For hunting, yeah, they can hunt in teams for strategy, but they are very social. They don't necessarily stay with the same <coughs> for long. And are all species of do dolphins harmless, right? Well, what's your definition of harmless? <laughs> uh, I think, yes. I don't know of any attacks on humans in the wild from killer whale down to Corpus, but in captivity they are a little bit aggressive.
They are a protected species. <laughs> you can't feed or touch them. And if I now fed actually like not on purpose, but if I accidentally now fall in the water, I mean <laughs> it's not technically swimming with them. <laughs>
Dolphins are a protected species. We're only allowed to stay with them for a certain amount of time, and our time is almost up. But before we leave, I'd like to do some environmental parameters just to see what kind of conditions they're living in. So if anyone wants to help me out, any kids who like science or don't and just want to be playing in a bucket of water, come in the middle and I'll be over here. Now we're going to take the temperature of the water. 
When it's a really hot day, you gotta step in a puddle of water. It's a really small puddle. What does that puddle feel like? Is it cold? Is it warm? What's that water temperature like? It's cold. What do you think? Do you think it's hot? I think it might be hot too. So this could be like a really big puddle because it's so shallow. So we're gonna look at these thermometers. Here you wanna take one, you can take the other one. Alright, I don't know if you guys can read thermometers, but we're gonna look at this side. There's gonna be that red line. How high does it go? What number does it hit? 80. 80. Yep, yours says 80. What does yours say? It's nothing. This one's broken. Oh no, it's not. I see. Just about 82. Also, not 82, 80 also. So that's 80 degrees. And our water temperature was 79.6. Six, so our air temperature was 79.6 degrees. Those are really, really close. So our water is actually slightly warmer than our air temperature today, which isn't normal. But the water and air temperatures around here are usually five degrees difference, either greater or less. They're pretty close. So you guys were pretty accurate. You said that it was going to be kind of like the same little ones here. Everyone hold on to something.